Okay, so let's get started and this video we're going to start the project. Uh so yeah, we'll face the blank play the blank page. That scary blank page. So how to start, right? Uh there's a lot of um uh project generators and stuff like that. Uh I I would strongly recommend keep it simple, especially at the beginning. So in this in this project we will be really simple straightforward and uh, we will do everything uh, by ourselves so we will understand everything going on in the project so i will create a directory here on the terminal and i will call it digipy that's the name of the project going there so i'm inside that and now the first thing will be cre uh, will be about creating a virtual environment so a virtual environment is basically an environment just for our project so that way we have like a local python version uh, for the project and we can make sure that the, our code work independent of the system so we are not using system-wide dependencies libraries or stuff like that everything is like isolated uh, so that's a good idea and in Python, we have a tool called VirtualEnv that creates a virtual environment. <laughs> so the way you do it is you call VirtualEnv. Um, in my machine, I need to call VirtualEnv2 because I have Python 3 and Python 2. But you probably need to call VirtualEnv and then pass a, a folder, a name, basically. And this create a... A directory there so we have a new directory called benv virtual environment and now we just need to activate that so activate benv and there you go now i have my own python environment uh, so i can do like things like pip list to see all the li libraries list and you can see like i have just the very basic libraries and there's anything else there so that's good. Uh, the next thing uh, we will need to do is use a virtual control system uh, to save like the state of the project. So in case we need to roll back to something, we can do it, right? It's like a, it's not a backup, but yeah, have like snapshots of the project, and we will use Git. So you probably have heard about Git, GitHub. It's it's very popular. It's really good. So why not? So the way to create a repository here, repository is the directory with the code, just a fancy name. Uh, it's through git uh, init, and that's it. So we now have a repository here. Uh, so if I, well, if I do a list, oh, you can see that there's a new .git folder in this uh, directory in our project and all the repository stuff is in there so that's that's it uh, so the next thing well git allows you to do a lot of stuff like roll back see the status save snapshots and all that stuff so the most basic stuff is git status and at this point well it's trying to track them our virtual environment and that's not good because we want to save our project and not the environment right the environment is like an external thing so the way to ignore uh, the environment and every file in the directory that we don't want to track is through a file called dot git ignore so we'll just create that file ignore and this file we basically need to list whatever we don't want to track it's like a pattern base so we don't want to track anything in them as a directory and we don't want to track anything called uh, ending with PYC like PYC extension the Python bytecode we don't want to track that and that's pretty much it so if I do a git status, it's not trying to track my environment anymore. 
that's cool that's awesome uh, what else so we have a virtual environment we have git uh, just let's start coding right so uh, I will do this to keep it simple I will code implement all this the, the graph thing in one file and we will test that using the code in another file so I will create uh, two files right digipy.py it's a python file and tests.py so let me open those uh, so digipy at the left and test at the right and for testing we can just use the code that's fine so the first thing is just import digipy which is empty at the moment but that's fine and then we can we can just start like typing the, the code that you know trying different things but i i will recommend use a unit test framework because you have runners and it's easier so we will use unit test so let's import unit test unit test is part of the standard library so it should be fine and unit test requires us to implement a class with the test cases so let's just do that so class uh, let's call it usage case and it come from unit test dot test case cool I don't need that I don't need any of this and the next thing is just implement a test so test what we want to test we will start testing base classes like very simple so base classes self it's a method we will do and nothing for now so pass and that's our test and in order to run this uh, you need to test implement uh, a runner which is kind of cool and that's in unit test dot main and main we additionally can pass a uh, verbosity equal to two to make it purpose right to know which test switch and all that stuff so if I run this this file if I save this and well what's oh okay it's all good if I run this uh, like Python and execute this file you can see that it's already finding one test running it and the test it's okay it's passing so oh, it's good and that's pretty much it so in the next video we will start uh, implementing a really basic graph and um, yeah I'm trying to, to, to see how this methodology works and where testing comes in and why it's, why it's handy during the development of a project so that's for the next video thank you for watching bye bye